Hi, my name is Mackenzie, and I'm gonna be teaching you about the Great Lakes today. But first, we need to take a step back and go to the very beginning to learn how the Great Lakes were made. About 14,000 years ago, almost all of North America was covered in three kilometers of ice. Now that includes all of Canada and some of the United States. Now this amount is more than 3,000 times the height of your school. Do you guys know what percentage or what fraction of the water is in the Great Lakes? This pie represents how much water is in the Great Lakes, how much fresh water is available for us to drink. Now, do you know how much is in the Great Lakes? That would be one piece or one fifth of the pie. That also equals 20%. Now that's a really big responsibility for us to have 20% or one fifth of the world's fresh water in our backyard. So now that we know how the Great Lakes were made and why they are so important, we need to know their names. I wanna hear you shout out any name of the Great Lake that you know. When I think of the Great Lakes, I use the acronym or a word in which each letter of that word means something else. So when I think of the Great Lakes, I use the word homes. Now, let's all go through the names together. What does the H mean? It means Huron. How about the O? That's Ontario, close to us. How, what does the M mean? That's Michigan. And the E? Erie. And last but not least, the S. Superior. So now we know how the Great Lakes were made. We know why they're so important. We know their names and we know how much fresh water is in them. What else could we possibly need to know? I know, how about where they are on a map? Where to begin? I know, how about we think of the big countries on either side of the Great Lakes? Now, can you guys tell me what country this is? That's right, it's Canada where we live. And how about the country down to the south? That's our neighbors to the south, USA. What is the only province to border all of the Great Lakes? That would be where we live in Ontario. Now, in comparison, there's only one province on our side of the Great Lakes, but if we go to our neighbors in the south, there's actually eight different states that border these lakes. Now, can you guys tell me what is the only Great Lake completely in the United States? And that would be Lake Michigan. Now, what is the largest and the coldest of all the Great Lakes? And that would be Lake Superior. Can you notice that it's also the most northern lake? Make sure to wear your coat when you're up there. Have you guys ever been to the beaches down on the south coast of Niagara, like Shirkston or in Port Colborne, Crystal Beach? Make sure to bring your sunscreen when you go there. Now, do you guys know the names of the last two lakes here and here? Can you tell me which one is Lake Ontario? How about I give you a hint? So we know that Niagara is surrounded by two of the greatest lakes. We are lucky to be sandwiched in between Lake Ontario and Lake Erie. Since we already know where Lake Erie is on our map right here, which of these two great lakes is Lake Ontario? And that would be this one, right? Niagara is sandwiched in between Lake Ontario on the top and Lake Erie on the bottom. How lucky are we to have these two natural resources for us to use? Now, last but not least is Lake Huron right here. This lake is one of the most important as it has the longest shoreline, which means it has lots of wetlands out of all the Great Lakes it has the most. And this is really important because this is where baby fish live and they grow. So now that we have our bearings or direction straight, Let's name some other land and water bodies that are located around the Great Lakes. Let's look at the Niagara River. Niagara Falls is actually located on the Niagara River in between these two Great Lakes. Can you guys show me on the map where it is? That's right here. 
located in between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Next, I want you guys to tell me what direction the Great Lakes flow. As a hint, we start with the most northern Great Lake. Do you remember which one that is? That's Lake Superior. So from Lake Superior, where do the Great Lakes flow? They flow from Superior down to Lake Michigan, back up to Lake Huron, over to Lake Erie, and then to Lake Ontario. Now, from Lake Ontario, do you guys know the name of the pas passage that goes from Lake Ontario through Quebec out to the ocean? The name of that passageway is the St. Lawrence Seaway, going through from Lake Ontario all the way out to the ocean. Now, which ocean does our water from the Great Lakes end up in? Is it the Pacific Ocean or is it the Atlantic Ocean? It is the Atlantic Ocean on the east coast of Canada. Last but not least, can you guys show me where we are located on this map? Do you remember what I said earlier about how Niagara is squished in between these two Great Lakes? That's right, right here in between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. How lucky are we to have two Great Lakes on either side of us? They provide us with fresh, fresh clean drinking water, habitats for many plants and animals, they help regulate our climate, and provide amazing landscapes for playing in the water and going for hikes. Unfortunately, we do have some threats that our Great Lakes face. Come on, let's go through them now and see what you can do to help out. So Lake Erie has a lot of farms and a lot of industry on its shores. When there's lots of pollution going into this lake, it creates this green plant all over the lake, which can harm fish. Do you guys know the name of this plant? The name is algae. Blue-green algae is actually the worst kind we see in this lake. It can harm your animals and it can harm us. Now we have to be careful because we get a lot of our drinking water from this lake. Ships traveling through the Great Lakes come from all over the world. When they do, they bring water in their ballast and empty it into the Great Lakes. Now luckily, we've been able to stop this over the years, but back then, when the water emptied out into the Great Lakes, a lot of these plants and animals from other areas came in and competed for water and other resources with our native species. Now we call these species invasive. Do you guys know any types of invasive species found in the Great Lakes? Some other invasive species that are found in the Great Lakes include zebra mussels, round gobies, the spiny water flea, the rusty crayfish, and many others. I'm sure you can name lots. You all did a great job. Now you know the name of the Great Lakes. You know how much water they have. You know why they're so important to us, where they are located on a map, and some threats they face today. But there are many ways that you can help here in Niagara to help stop these threats. You can pick up your garbage, make sure to not litter, make sure to clean up after your pets outside, and try not to feed um, the geese at the beach. You can help conserve water by reducing water usage in your home, and that helps protect our drinking water. One last question I wanna ask you at home is how are you gonna help stop these threats in our Great Lakes for many futures to come? Have a great day, thanks for watching. My name is Mackenzie and I'm an environmental technician at the City of St. Catharines.